Representative Fritz, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. What do you do for a professional career, and can you share a little bit about your life outside the Capitol? Well, thank you. Uh, I love to share a little bit about my life. And the, the uh, first thing I will share is that my husband, Jim, and I are celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary this, this Saturday, February 8th. And we're looking forward to uh, a little celebration in our hometown of Faribault, where we have lived and raised our family for the last 50 years. And while I was, uh, while we've, I've been married, I worked uh, in the nursing home industry as a licensed practical nurse. I started out, uh, I actually met my husband. Um, he was on leave from the Navy, and I was a nursing student at the time at uh, St. Lucas in, in Faribault. And I met him at a garage warming. Uh, and uh, it was a dance, and we both loved to dance. And back then it was 50s the music, and that music is something that has stayed with us. We do a lot of dancing uh, to that music to this day. We just, as a matter of fact, came back from the surf ballroom where we've been going for 17 years to the Buddy Holly uh, event that takes place in February down there. So I went, and while we were there on Friday, we renewed our wedding vows. There were seven couples, and we were fortunate enough to, to be able to do that. So. I'm, I'm sort of have that, uh, maybe that honeymoon glow yet from, <laughs> from all of that. Um, we, again, I, 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 I'll get back to my profession, which was as an LPN uh, in the nursing home world. I started out, I actually started at the Fairbairn State School and Hospital after I graduated from nurses training. And it was, uh, it just wasn't a good fit for me. So I, at that time they were building a nursing home, a new nursing home called Pleasant Manor. I thought, oh, what a lovely name. I'm going to work there. So I did go there, and I worked there for a number of years. And then I had a, a baby or two, and I've had, uh, we have uh, five children, 17 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. So I've had a very busy life um, as a wife and a mother, and I also worked. I worked mostly part-time uh, in the nursing home so that I could be with my children and family and attend um, their many, many events. They were all very uh, involved in sports and school. So uh, my husband and I have been very fortunate to have, um, have raised these children and have these grandchildren now. Well, now we're attending our grandchildren's basketball and soccer and hockey games. So uh, it's been, um, it's gone very fast. 50 years, uh, it's, I, I won't say you blink and it's gone, but when I, as I reminisce, we have accomplished a great deal and we're very proud and very blessed to have um, had this 50 years that we've had together. Why did you initially decide to run for office as a representative? Well, I was working in the nursing home industry for, uh, I worked for over 30 years. And the last, I would say, 25 years of that, I became more conscious of uh, the problems that, that uh, are in um, healthcare and particularly in the nursing home area where I, you know, was, uh, I loved my work. It was a very, you know, I did it um, because I was trained as a nurse and I was able to serve and, and administer help and care to people who, who really, really needed it. And I had the knowledge and the training to deliver that care. However, when you get into the work world, the real world, it's different. And I know that still today nurses tell me, oh, it's a whole lot different than it was in nurses' training. And it is, of course, in any, any profession. But actually in nursing, I think it's worse because, uh, you know, I was the nurse, the LPN. There was an RN who oversaw everything and then myself for 60 patients. And that was everything. When I think back, of course, I was young. I was 21 years old and uh, I had a lot of energy and ability and, and uh, desire. So I did that for many, many years, but I wasn't the only one doing it. You know, the other nurses and nursing assistants were also just as, I think, uh, overworked, frazzled, and, and uh, so I did that for many, many years. And always in, you know, the break room or after work or something, talked about, you know, this is, we, we have got to do something to make this better. We're, you know, we're walking a thin line here, you know, trying to administer to this, you know, it's almost like triaging which was ridiculous. So 
I became more politically uh, uh, aware of uh, what it cost and the fact that we were basically very low on the food chain and worked within the, within the system for many years uh, trying to and did come up here. I, I would you know, drive up here and testify as a citizen uh, uh, for the issues and I would bring residents with me. I would, you know, in the old days we, you know, we could do that. They, I had a station wagon, we'd put the wheelchair in the back and, and bring up a couple of, you know, wonderful women that wanted to tell their story, very courageous. And it just, you know, it just, it built on me. And finally, I had Helen and the family now says, go ahead and use mom's name. But Helen was a patient who had ended up in my care in the nursing home after she had gone to uh, buy flowers and then had a stroke and never went home again. She ended up in the nursing home. She was uh, always articulate and very able to uh, express herself. And she kept telling me, you've got a good gift of gab. You need to go and get us some help. You should go to St. Paul. And I, I, you know, it's like, okay, okay. You know, it never dawned on me that I'd ever end up here. So I give her all the credit. I'm here because Helen asked for help. And so I'm still here asking for help. Can you describe the district you represent and tell us what your constituents care about? Well, I, I come from, you know, I always say, uh, you know, we just take that Highway 35 South and I live in the perfect place. You take an exit and you're in Faribault. And Faribault is where I live and reside, and that's in Rice County. Then I also go a little further south and I pick up uh, part of Steele County, and then I go even further south and pick up part of Dodge County. So now I have three counties after the redistricting. And I'm, I suppose I'm much more familiar with Steele and Rice than I am with Dodge, but I feel I'm, I'm a rural person anyway, so I feel very comfortable uh, in Dodge. And Claremont is one of the towns in the district and uh, met and, and worked with uh, the folks down, down there and continue to, to get back and forth and, and stay in touch with them. The issues are pretty much the same. Uh, there's a nursing home in each of those counties, many nursing homes really, but you know, in particular, I work uh, directly and closely with those folks and then the transportation issue of greater Minnesota, getting to and from uh, you know, uh, safely because of our rural roads. And I do have a highway issue with Highway 14 in Dodge, which is my number one priority down there. That highway has killed more people than I, uh, than I can even count. And just recently, again, there was another death. And so as a matter of fact, just to give you an, an instance, the, the Highway 14 piece that I inherited, uh, when you are a patient at the Owatonna Hospital, they refuse to uh, send you by ambulance, they send you by helicopter so that you so that you can get there to Rochester. That's how bad it is. So I've had a bill, a couple of, you know, strong bills and really great legis, uh, great testifiers and we'll continue to do that. And part of that happened, the uh, corridors of commerce that was created this last time, and I don't serve on transportation, but uh, Representative Hornstein did come up with this idea and I thought, well, this is very good. Uh, we were included in that. So we at least are at the table. And I think people now know up here about Highway 14. But they do before, but they know even more how, how important this is for us uh, you know, to, to fund and to uh, fix that highway so that people don't get killed. So I have, that's a big issue in Dodge. And in Steele County as well, you know, the transportation and the health care issues and the jobs uh, that, that um, for the most part, lots of manufacturing and farming. Agriculture is huge. Uh, coming up uh, also into uh, Rice County, I have, you know, my, again, I would say my hospital, my health care is huge and jobs and education. So in, in Faribault, we, have, we were able to, after many years, finally uh, pass some bonding legislation for South Central College. I have a South Central College in Faribault, and they are uh, renovating and expanding that. So that was a big bill for me, so that because I felt we were losing a whole generation of kids, and 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 this will this is going to enhance that whole learning um, piece for for the kids and the you know and and in even older you know people who are 45 years old going back to find themselves a, a new profession. I have a lot of uh, of those type students as well. So 
it's hard. You can't afford to go to school and to drive back and forth to the cities or Mankato because, and then work besides. So I have a, it's a struggle. So the struggles are the same uh, throughout uh, those districts down there. And I think they're unique to greater Minnesota. I feel I'm a strong voice for them um, because I'm one of them. If given the chance, who would you like to be for a day or who would you like to exchange roles with? Wouldn't it be great to be Pope Francis? <laughs> He's my new hero. And, um, and it's always been Mother Teresa. I, I have a great admiration for her and the dedication and uh, I just that, that she had for the poor and the impact that such a small, humble person had on this world. So when you say, you know, one vote doesn't matter, I guess it does because one person certainly matters. And, uh, you know, I would love to give up all this worldly trappings and actually be able to do uh, the right thing every day when I think she did. So I'd trade with her. <laughs>